Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, can you hear how happy all the fairies are? Because we're getting ready for the holidays and you're here just in time because we're going to add some cute little winter adornments to our felties. You can turn them into ornaments, you can just make them holiday gifts, or just, you know, spread them around for a little holiday cheer. So whether you sew or don't sew, we're going to make it very easy for you to get these little guys ready for the holidays. And we're so glad you're here, so I want to say hi to a few people. Hi to Sarah, previously from Austin, now in Indiana. Thanks for being here. Hi to Kay, Kathy. Elizabeth, Robin, hi to Sherry, hi to Janice, hi Kathy, hi Sam, all the way in the UK. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Hopefully we saw a lot of Mr. Fiddles made last week, so I know that you're ready to get some sweaters and other cozy stuff on them. Uh, hi to Edwina. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. So we are Living Felt based in Central Texas, but as you can see, we have friends all over the world saying hi in the chat. Be sure you check in because we give prizes away at the end of the show. And if you're watching the replay, thank you, first of all. And then leave your comments down below. Tell us your favorite takeaway or ask questions if they didn't get answered because you get entered to win prizes too. So I'm going to give away two prizes right now to people who commented on last week's show. Uh, they win one either a Mr. Fiddles or a Storybook Bunny kit. We're going to look at both of those little critters today. So congratulations to Memory Bradley and Marie Claire McDougall. Congratulations, gals. And lined up today are the loveliest of fairies to share with you some things that you might consider making for your holiday ornaments. The first up, the magical fairy Anne. Yay! Hey, everybody. So today we're talking about a project that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is how to holiday blingify anything. <laughs> I can't even tell you the decibel level my voice got to when I saw these things. So I know that you are gonna fall in love with them just as much as I did. So I wanted to share with you an ornament kit that would be perfect for a uh, sweater weather season. This is Ice Skater. She was a project last year, two years ago. <laughs> we did it on Wooly Wednesday, tons of fun. As you can see, she's got shiny skates, always shiny is always good. And she's got a little bag of goodies. It could be presents from Santa. It could be, she could be shopping for friends and family. Um, she's super cute <laughs> and perfect for adding some holiday bling. So thank you all so much for being here. Next up is Fairy Angela. Woo! Woo! All right, so who's looking for a fun <laughs> holiday ornament project? So if that who is you, we got you covered with our barn owl ornament. Look at this little guy. It comes in a kit with everything you need except for needles and foam. So this is available on the website now. Let's go get you one. Up next is Fairy Alyssa. <laughs> Hello friends, very excited to be here today and share with you our string jointed vintage bear. He's so cute and it goes from cookie to muffin. Um, it's awesome for the holidays because you can give it as a gift or make it as an ornament and you can even add some fun winter wear. Up next is Fairy Kayla. Yay! <laughs> Hey everybody, I just wanted to share one of the critters that we're ornamentifying today. This is our sweet and simple fox. It comes in a kit, super easy for beginners, and look how adorable he is. <laughs> yeah, and since it is becoming sweater weather, I did have a question for everybody. Why did the jalapeno put on a sweater? <gasps> Why did the jalapeno <laughs> put on a sweater? Because he was a little chilly. <laughs> I've been holding that in all day. It's been so hard. I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. Thank you, Kayla. Can I just see a big round of hearts for all the fairies? This is our crew. They pack your orders. They make everything that we sell. Answer the phone. Answer the email. And honestly, keep me smiling just all day long, all week long. So today we're excited to share with you some fun ways you can dress up your little felted ornaments and that's what we're going to be doing. So if you have your critters, bring them close and I'm going to start by sharing with you uh, some of the things that you might gather for this project. So 
let's look here. These are our, our little beings. And let me get this out of the way. Sorry, y'all. Not quite fair. Let me get that out of the way. And um, just dial in a couple of things here. The first thing I want to show you, uh, and I'm going to pull up the chat here so I can see what y'all are saying. And Holly is here with me, so she's going to help uh, answer, get your questions answered as well. So post them in the chat if you have questions or maybe you have ideas of your own. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is some things that you might pull together to add some holiday dressings or just winter dressings to your critters. So I'm going to start with my thrift store finds and um, encourage you to consider going to the baby section, infant toddler section, to get a variety of textures and colors at a really affordable price. So this little sweater is the one that I used for um, cookie and I'm gonna show you how to do that. This little baby sweater still has lots of light left. Um, I've only cut out a portion of the back and this cost me $2.99, which might seem ex expensive, but I didn't have to cut up my own sweater, which would have been much more expensive <laughs> than, than $2.99. Then I got this adult sweater um, to show you. This is a wool sweater, so boiling opportunity here, which I have not done yet. It's an extra large wool sweater. Um, it's got some fun little adornments on it, and I'll show you this more up close, but it had... Um, it had tears in it, so I got it for like a dollar something. So a whole wool sweater. So That's lots, of, yeah, lots of opportunity here. I'm gonna turn down and show you a few things so you can see. Um, I used this only minimally so far, but these are like little kids' shorts, and I loved it. You know, it's seersucker, and I loved the patterns on it. And this I have. This was 69 cents, I think. Yeah. And then these are some little trousers. I liked them for the red corduroy. And I want to tell you, there was so much more there that I didn't get, but these were 99 cents. So these would make great little clothes or little pockets. And then this is going to be a real treasure trove for you. Our, our socks is something to consider. So um, go to the toddler section. It could be the regular store. So I got these at Target uh, in the children's section. These little tiny infant socks are fabulous for the minis that we're doing today. Look, I even found some that are like little animals and I started making, I know, a sweater so for one of the dolls. So infant socks for the tiniest critters. I will show you how to do this today. Then uh, stripes and checks. The reason I like infant clothes is because the patterns and the stripes tend to be smaller. And that's really appealing and cute. But also you're gonna find that this size for our tiny felties is just awesome. I have some, uh, I'll insert these here. These are some flannels that I'm working with. I bought this as like a layer cake, I think it's called, a big 10, uh, 10 inch squares. I'm going to use a little of this today as well. So fabrics, uh, flannels, shirts are awesome. And I'll tell you why the socks versus the flannels for certain things. And then these are adult socks. So two types of adult socks or, you know, we saw the striped socks. These don't have any fuzzies. You get these fuzzy socks. They tend to shed everywhere. We're, we'll deal with that a little bit, but they look so cozy and cute. So so, you know, adult patterns can be larger, um, children's patterns might be smaller. These are just inexpensive socks and they can substitute for sweaters. So we want sweaters and sweater-ish um, type things for these projects and socks are just a great option. Old sweaters, uh, whatever. We have a lot Questions? of people saying mismatched socks. All those mismatch, miss, I can talk, <laughs> mismatched socks. And if you've ever shrunk in a wool sweater on accident. Yes, <laughs> yes. If you've ever fooled a wool sweater by putting it. And so the thing is, oh, I'm going to save these aside. The thing is, uh, so it's not what to do with the mismatched socks, but maybe where did they go? So you might have a crafter <laughs> in your life that adopted the, the mismatched socks, actually. Okay, so these, I think I can, uh, I can tuck these aside. And um, so today, the, one of the first things we're going to do is we're gonna look at just how, and I'll, I'll do this one. I'm gonna look at uh, these little ornaments and we're gonna start uh, quickly by looking at, um, let's see if I'm there. 
let me get over here some here's our here's our little friends that we're gonna some of them that we're gonna work with today we're gonna start by looking at how to turn something you've already felted into a basic ornament um, so we will start with that and for that we're gonna start with sweet and simple a uh, little fox right here. So he's just felted. He doesn't have any other fabrics or anything on him. We showed this last year, maybe on Barn Owl, I think we showed we showed this. So this is just a quick way, if you have something 100% felted, how to turn it into an ornament. Oh, but wait, let me, uh, let me jump. So today, I forgot to tell you, so for today, we don't have a kit for needle felting, but we've put together what we call our holiday jingles pack. So I'm going to be working with the holiday jingles pack today. So it's a two part, it's a two part pack. You're going to get um, some holiday jingles, some bling, uh, Anne said blingify her holiday stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to get this hand curated little pack. We're going to show you that everything about it is either usable or giftable. I'll be working with that. And you also get this free printout for doing some miniature props, which I'll show you, and um, some of the patterns that I'll be working with today. Truly, you don't need the patterns, but if you get this holiday bling plaque, you're gonna get this printout for free. And right now, we don't have this as a PDF, but give us a little time and we'll put it up as a PDF if, if you want it as well. Okay, so I'm gonna be working with that today. And anything that we're, any of the kits we're showing today or other stuff, just go to, uh, we'll add the link in the description, I realize we didn't do that, or go to our website and click learn and go to the Wooly Wednesday tab. Okay, all right, so let's turn this little guy into an ornament. Super easy, so you see he's 100% felted, and let's say that we just wanna add a green ribbon or a green ribbon and a jingle bell to him. So here he is, and what we'll use is our doll needle. So I'm gonna get our very long doll needle here, and we're going to actually make a little loop up here in his head. So we're gonna start in the very bottom and I'm going to run this up through the base and out through the top of his head wherever you want that ribbon to be. The here jingle, we go. Jingle pack is getting a lot of love. Oh fun. Okay so now we're coming out right here through the the top of his head and I've just tied my little ribbon into a knot. You could have put your jingle bell on there if you want or whatever. And what we're going to do is just loop this through there and then just go right back through the top of his head. Now he's very well felted so he can handle the tension that I'm about to put on him as we pull this tight. So just try and come out near where the other guy was. And now you've got both ends of your thread out. I didn't really need actually all this. I have way more thread than I need, so bear with me here as I try and hold on to this and pull the other end. Okay. Jennifer's asking if the doll needle comes in the jingle pack. It actually doesn't, but we do sell, we, we've, we've, we've shared the doll needle with so many things and kits and stuff, so a lot of people do have it, but you can buy them standalone. Okay, but that was a, a good, it's a good add-on, so we should put it on that page. So now what we have is this great little hook here, and we can just pull this tight. For those of you who've made these before or made our string jointed critters, you know that we encourage you to needle felt them very well so that you can pull this very tight and they don't get misshapen. I'm using button thread. You can use upholstery thread. You can use waxed floss. The button thread and stuff goes through there much more easily. Then what I want to do is cut that as close to the base as absolutely possible. And then usually I would fill it in with wool right there to hide that. But today what I'm going to do is different is pull something out from the jingle pack and I've got <laughs> some of my jingle assortments here and I'm going to pull out my glue. I'm using Aileen's glue today, tacky glue, and I'm going to dig in here and I'm going to get out a wooden snowflake. So all the jingle packs come with a wooden uh, like laser cut snowflake and I'm just going to glue it right to his little bottom there. The glue dries clear. Aileen's glue dries clear and I won't go out too far. I probably should have put the glue on him but I don't know how much I need there. You could use your hot glue gun if you want. I didn't feel like plugging in today. 
Um, I would like to say last week someone wrote to us about the my Gorilla Glue and I was told it's very bad for animals and that dogs find it appealing and eat it and it actually expands when it gets liquid and I did not know that so I apologize I'll not use the Gorilla Glue anymore um, let me go over here and see if I can show you this now so look what a cute little ornament this would make and he'd be mounted on like a little snowflake and what a great uh, addition he would be to like a gift. I like to put ornaments uh, with gifts myself. I think it's a fun way to pair. So there's number one, how to turn something you felted just into um, an ornament. I brought a couple more to show you in that same flavor. You may not need to run the thread all the way through the body. This is Chickadee, which is another one of our kits. And he has needle felted clothes and a needle felted hood. And I just threaded it right through his hood. If you have a critter like our little sheepy here, you could just run that thread right through the sweater um, or the sweater and then his body and it won't show. And you could always cut them loose. Like if you decide to make him an ornament just for the season, you could cut them loose after. So that's the quick uh, way to make something an ornament. I think I'll be making and, all of my felted goodies. <laughs> <laughs> So fun. Okay, so let's jump to Bunny. Bunny was one of my favorite little uh, beings for us to make today, and it's one of the one of the simplest ones. Let me show this to you here. So here's Bunny. Bunny's wearing one of our little baby socks and just holding a little um, bottle brush wreath. So the bottle brush wreath does come in the jingle pack, um, as does the uh, ribbon that I just used comes in the jingle pack um, and the uh, snowflake. So to make bunny here's what we're going to do now you want your critters to be well put together but i will warn you that all of these critters had to endure lots of clothings on and off over this week and so <laughs> if you made them if you destroy them you can put them back together again i just want you to know <laughs> for those of you who feel a little less confident um the in the print in the printout i'm giving a couple of little uh patterns. You really don't necessarily need them, but just to give you kind of a size guide here, this is about the size that we're using for our little sock. And when I'm using a sock, when possible, or a sweater, I like to use a finished edge. The finished edge looks cute at the neckline or at the waist. It's really up to you. Um, and it, to me, it depends on the size of the neckline and, and how you would have to treat the cut edge. So for this one, I think it's about 10 stripes. I'm not going to count. I'm just going to cut it and I'll put, I'll put Bunny over here so you can see him and his brother right here. And we're just going to cut the bottom right there. What I like about stripes and patterns and stuff is it kind of helps you get them clean. <laughs> can help you keep a really clean edge. Now these socks uh, don't fray so much and this cut edge is gonna be at the neck so I'm not really worried about that. But here's how we get it on and how we find our way. Again, if the head's loose, if the head's wobbling, this is gonna be a challenge. But even if they come apart, you can put them back together. Oh yeah, you could make him a cap, you know, like that. You could, you could make him a cap and you could sew the bottom, you could sew this the same way I'm gonna show you how to show sew the neckline. Um, I meant to bring in one of my sock dolls. So I had a period of my life that was very difficult and work, work was difficult. Living felt was not what it is today, and work was a challenge. And I used to come home and make sock dolls for therapy. It was total therapy. And, um, and so I got really, uh, had a lot of fun socks, and I learned how to sew socks. So this is kind of how I, I learned my sock. Now, I like to have that little, you know, the join, uh, the, the weave in the back. Just pull it over so you kind of get it where you want it, and you have it straight. It's important that it's straight. If his ears are gonna be tucked in, it doesn't matter, you know, like if you want to do that to make him cute, make sure you pull him out right now and get his little arms straight. So. Oh, he's just cute. Everybody's, I know. Everybody's loving the bunny. I know, he's adorable. So okay, so cute. now you want his arms straight and kind of down by his side and the sweater about where you think you want it. If you're doing something like raccoon, you might find that the raccoon or something with a big tail, you might find that you need to accommodate for the tail. But here we just need to accommodate for the arms. And this is literally how easy it is. We're going to very, very carefully now do a little surgery on our sweater and we want to see kind of where is the top 
where's the top of that arm even if it's all the way at the neck you want to pick like a shoulder point and I'm gonna go in I'm gonna go in right here uh, don't look at me I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna go in like right about here it may not be perfect uh, here I think I went in one two I needed a little a little room in the neck I'm gonna go on the one two on the one two third gold stripe in tiny tiny don't make any big no sudden moves here because these holes want to grow so just make a little snip with your scissors and then kind of put your finger see how big that grows immediately then just put bunny's arm through it so we have a couple of people asking why you wouldn't pull the sweater up from the bottom i had to wait till you were finished cutting. what do you mean uh in, to uh, the sock how you put him on over his head i don't know it, okay just i don't preference. know i just because the head's smaller okay the head's just smaller. A few people well. asked. I just wanted yeah. to make sure there wasn't a good Okay, reason. so this is, it's more like a little sweater vest, right? So there we go. And I think I went one, two, three. And I'm just going to make, I need, you need to find the spot, not just level. You need to find the spot. And you can gather a little more of the excess to the back of the neckline if you want. And tiny, tiny snip. Put your finger through there. Remember, don't go, don't go crazy. All right. I can't see what everyone's saying. They're <laughs> just loving the bunny. They, uh, Brenda says a felting is therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Barb says it's always a treat to see what you have in store for us. <laughs> okay, so here's here's bunny. And now, if you want to stitch his neckline, you can. You could run ribbon around there or whatever you want. And I'm going to show you how we just stitch his little neckline. And if his arms cut a little loose, well, then you could go in there and needle felt them down. Don't worry about it. So. Um, any regular thread, I'm just using a polyester thread, something kind of um, solid. I'll set this little guy over here. And I want to start in the back of the neck as opposed to the front or the side of the neck. And we're just going to do this little uh, running stitch around. <clears throat> and I'm going to give him like a little, it's going to be like a little frou-frou collar. So I'm just going to go in at the back here. And all we do is weave ourselves in and out like a little running stitch. So pull this, but leave yourself a tail. You need a tail left over. And just run this thread around. I love Jane says, tiny clothes for the holidays. A mm -hmm. look for the little bitties. It's fun because it gives them a real wintry feel, like if you put them on the tree or something, you know, it just gives them a real wintry feel. Maybe you have somebody who loves like, I don't know, panda bears, but you decide to give it a sweater, you know, <laughs> just make it look extra sweet. Okay. Yeah, they're just, they're, the bunnies, I think we're going to be all sold out of bunnies after this. Uh, <laughs> Storybook Bunny is a favorite. So Storybook Bunny is based on my now late dog, Speedy, and Speedy had this face. Didn't he, Holly? Oh, Isn't oh that I know, every face? time I walk by Storybook Bunny, that's who I think about. It looks, it, it's just Speedy's little spirit came out in this bunny. Okay. Uh, and I made him while he was still here, so it was extra fun, too. Okay, so here's what we do now. Go ahead and you can go ahead and cut your needle off. Put this aside and we are going to cinch this tight so what happens when you cinch this is the neck will just tighten just like that and now you have like this sealed off little collar you don't have to you if you wanted you could tuck this in you could you know you could hand stitch it real neatly but you don't really have to you can get away with this I promise and uh, you know if you wanted you could put fray check on the arms and uh, if there's time, I'll suggest how you could do s sleeves, but sleeves are a bit of a challenge. So just tie this in a knot and then hide it. It's gonna hide right underneath that collar. It's a little more challenging to do this from the inside, cinching from the inside, um, it just is. But this will kind of be hidden right back here behind the collar and then just cut it loose. So he, we could hang him, and I'm not going to do that since I already showed you how to do that. So let me just cut that free. I Wendy's think I just asking cut my knot. if the bunny, is, the bunny is a win, Wooly Wednesday tutorial. Uh, I think we did him a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it would have been a few years ago before we had all the fancy cameras that we have now. Um, let me pull out my jingles. Where's my, 
Where's my wreath? Okay, so he has a littler wreath. The wreaths are different sizes in the in the kits. They're kind of like, are what you get. But what I love about the bottle brush wreaths is that they stick to the wool. <laughs> so you don't even have to glue them on. That's so a two for one. Yeah, so there's there's a quick sweater that you can do with an actual, uh, with a little tiny um, baby, just a, a baby sock. So infant socks, new or used, go get them. They're super duper fun. All right, we're gonna jump to Mr. Fiddles. And I guess I'll just park him over here. So Mr. Fiddles is a little more is a little more involved, but not too much. So let me get his brother and the socks. I showed you some fuzzy socks in the, the last part of the, the supply section, and I couldn't prepare without bringing these socks as far as I did. So we're working with fuzzy socks on Mr. Fiddles, and that's because it just looks so sweatery. So I'll try and basically piece this one back together to show you how we do this, and also how you use an adult sock or a bigger sock to achieve uh, the same thing. Okay. We go here overhead, put it in a, what, some, some, that, something that looks like a sock. <laughs> okay, so here's my fuzzy socks that I used for Mr. Fiddles. And I loved the stripes. I thought it seemed very apropos for him. Um, and that way he's sort of like still in his native colors, right? It's like a raccoon sock. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and I couldn't find this in a baby, so I'm willing to go with an adult sock. So when you have an adult sock, what's nice is, you know, you're gonna be able to fold the fabric over. Now you can hand stitch uh, the socks to get uh, the closure if you want, or you can do it on the sewing machine. For these very fuzzy socks I use the sewing machine because the holes tend to be a little bigger and the needle wants to slide through there but if you don't have a sewing machine and you want to hand stitch you want to do what's called a back stitch and I'm not much of a seamstress but so let me tell you the first thing is here's our sweater template and what I like to do is cut mine out of like a piece of fabric so that it doesn't get too worked you know, I can, I can just, let, it pins on easier when you use fabric, so I just trace mine over a piece of flannel, and then I use the same thing. So whatever works for you, trace it out, and then cut out your little sock piece. And then you're gonna wanna turn it inside out to sew it. And on this one, I stitched as close to the edge as possible. If that's a challenge, cut it a little bigger. Um, but this is his top, it, this is inside out, and then we're gonna put it right side down and put it on him. Well, Mr. Fiddles is, um, everybody wants to know where Mr. Fiddles got his shoes. Well, <laughs> there's a thing about about the shoes, and I told Holly, I said they're gonna ask about the shoes. <laughs> there's a lot of questions so, about the shoes. So, all I wanna tell you is, be patient, because shoes are coming. That's all I can say, <laughs> is Santa is, his factory is working, as little elves are just cooking away as fast as they can. So the shoes are coming. The shoes are coming. The shoes are coming. Okay, that's all I can say is the shoes are coming. I wanna show you how to do this stitch so that people who are a little shy feel a little more, uh, they're shy about sewing. Some people are like, I don't sew. And I get it, I really, really get it. I brought tools. I brought tools to show you. Where are they? I brought tools, Holly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna have to reload my needle real fast. I'm gonna have Holly load this needle. Oh. I'm gonna, <laughs> it's easy, it's just that. Oh, just it's nice, that. it's yeah, nice thick thread. I'm gonna show you how that. to do the back stitch for those who just feel kind of shy about stitching. Um, and we'll, if, you, if you're gonna hand stitch, then you, if you use this stitch, it'll at least be nice and strong. And I'm gonna show you on Barry Bear's sweater. You thought Holly loading the needle was a good idea. I thought that was a good idea. Yeah, you would never know that Holly Are y'all having so. fun? Thanks for being here. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was say what? Shanna's into suit delivery. Oh yeah, Santa, Santa makes shoes. Um, can you pre-order? Not yet. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm a doll collector, so Donna's a doll collector. She has tons of shoes. All right, y'all, I'm gonna show you this back stitch just, just for the method of like, basically what's the direction of doing this so that you have a nice, strong stitch if you're doing it. Now, for those of you who sew, I'm probably gonna already mess up the very first beginning, so just forgive me. I just kind of have to get there how I get there. And um, let's say I'm gonna start 
I'm going to start up through the bottom just because that's what I would normally do. I just think you need to get an anchor stitch however that works and this usually your thread would be doubled but I'm using a, a, a white sweater and green embroidery floss to kind of show you the goal. Okay so I'm just going to start uh, somewhere and see if I can get this right. Okay so when we're doing a back stitch basically like you have a stitch and then I come back to the stitch that you started and then you go uh, like an equidistant from that past the stitch where you came up. Okay, so notice the first, your stitch is coming up, you're gonna go back and you're gonna see this real easy here. Um, yeah, Amy said so thank you for there. Showing, showing the stitch. Yeah, here you go, you go in, see how the thread is, is coming up here? You're gonna just go back to that last full stitch there and then come a distance away this, you would you do this with your regular sewing thread, like on this. On this, I, you know, on this I've used thicker threads, but I, I pull them really tight. And right now I'm just demonstrating for you that this is how you hand stitch. When I did my sock dolls, I never used the sewing machine because I liked the therapy of just hand stitching. And this is what I use to seal off those socks. If your socks, if you tend to cut your socks like that you want to sew these little shapes out of and you feel like they immediately unravel. My hot tip for you that I did with the sock dolls, I made all the shapes without ever cutting, I would make the shapes without cutting the socks and then cut it after I stitched it. And then like, cause some socks you cut and they immediately roll up. So if you sew your patterned area, if you will, before cutting it, then they won't unravel. So that is the back stitch. That's going to make a nice, strong seam for you uh, when you're doing these things. Yes, Heather was asking if, she, if you thought fabric glue. Would I, work. I, yeah, fabric glue might work, but I don't tend to glue, and I don't know how you glue. Like if you glue something like this, you would have to glue the sweater here, and mm -hmm. I feel like it would peel apart. So I think this would probably be less fuss than fabric glue to do something like this. So that's the back stitch. If you don't have a sewing machine, this is sewn on a sewing machine and we're just gonna put it right on Mr. Fiddles. So um, everyone, now Mr. Fiddles has a tail and that might be why I tend to go from the top because we have to get down on, on top of the tail. So let's get his brother dressed. They're like the, uh, what are those, those uh, the, the Watabi brothers? They dress the same in the Watabi brothers? I don't. <laughs> Somebody knows. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So we're getting our sweaters on. We got to get, I'm not going to sew his neck because that is, we'll just save that amount of time. Notice his tail. This is why I like socks and sweater sleeves because you, you get stretch. I've worked with flannel. I've done some stuff with the sewing of the flannel, but the socks and the sweater sleeves are going to give you stretch. So I'm just going to cut in his little armholes. I think he looks like a little urban with this, you know, like kind of cool. <laughs> so cute. He looks like, you know. I love Fiona says it's um, the middle of summer there. If oh. she got swimming trunks and bikinis would work. Oh. Could you imagine? That'd be so cute. <laughs> That's funny. Little Hawaiian print shirts. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, now I'm going to dream about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, there's my hole. I got it. Be careful there on those. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Um, the blanket stitch is not good. That's true. Yeah, the blanket stitch isn't so good because it actually leaves gaps and it wants to pull apart. So I did not, I don't find that the blanket stitch, that stitch that I showed you, the, the back stitch is going to be the strongest stitch for that hand stitched seam. Um, it looks like Vicky's asking about uh, doing a Vicky, zigzag. On yeah, the Vicky, machine. you absolutely can do a zigzag. I I don't tend to on this stuff. I would say you know play with it, and if you need to use some kind of tearaway interfacing for your machine, you might do some little tests because this chenille is a bit fiddly. Okay, so look, already he looks cozy, or it could be a she, huh? Uh, looks looks cozy and ready to go. And now we want to go a little bit further and let's do our scarf. So for the scarf, I have chosen flannel, which I put away. Where's all my flannel? Well, Tina had a good idea. She said you could get baby gloves and use the fingers for leg warmers. Oh my gosh, what a good idea. <laughs> so you're gonna have some dressed up fingers. <laughs> Okay, so here is uh, my flannel that I chose for this, and <clears throat> I didn't have any like baby flannel, which I really wanted, but so I went for like the smallest, you know, checks that I could. Of course, this is a job for your fabric scissors. 
in this we show you exactly like I use the full length of this 10 inches and just cut off what you want there's lots of colors you can choose that that's uh, the little pattern is in there like I said you don't really need it <coughs> excuse me oh I have a tickle in my throat no that's awful you just want to cut want to cut out what you want from your piece but the thing I want to warn you about this flannel besides the fact that I'm hack <laughs> my way through this it's bad. Talk you, all you. You take the drink. <laughs> Where did it go? There was a really good one. Oh, it said that Donna was saying that he's wearing tennis shoes now so he can run faster when he gets caught going through your trash can. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I want to warn you about with this flannel is that when you cut it, um, it's going to um, kind of shred. Not just not not the fraying bit isn't so much. It's just that you're going to continue to get these little tiny bits, and the same with the chenille. So, to deal with that, I'm using fray check. Now, for if you're a purist, well then don't use the fray check. I don't know what to tell you to use, but uh, fray check will keep you from having to sew the stuff. And I have some here for you, my little bottle. They say it's flammable, so definitely keep this away from pets and stuff. It says do not put in the eye, so be mindful when you're using it. It smells like a little like fuel, <laughs> you know, it does. <laughs> and you'll notice that this bottle is barely used, but the, the, you know, the stuff is wearing off. So, you know, don't use this and eat your popcorn at the same time, okay? Just use this stuff. All right, so... What you do with this, and I always have to clear the hole. Did I bring a pin? I did. You always have to clear the hole for some reason. It's not a glue. Uh, I tried to see if it had any adhesive qualities, and it doesn't seem to. Um, but I always have to clear that hole anyway. I did check to see would it seal stuff together. And then all I'm doing is just going right down the edge, um, just right down that edge, and then let it dry. Let it dry fully. I find that it doesn't really take an hour or anything, but just let it dry all the way and go all the way down both sides. I This is cut, this end is cut with pinking shears, which I did not bring today, but if you cut the end with pinking shears, you get a little less frame. Well, that's what, we had quite a few suggestions saying you could cut the whole scarf I, with pinking shears. Yeah, maybe I didn't want to see the spikes along the side necessarily, um, but his, his has some, if you see, and I think that was the natural edge of the fabric. So I didn't really want to see the, my pinking shears are large, not small. So that's why I chose that. Okay, so once you have that, what the other thing you can do is from the very end is cut what will be a tiny pocket for this. The pocket just adds something. I don't know what it is. So this is a fray checked. This is my scarf. It's all dried. And the one thing I found about the scarf that you may not be this technical about it, but I liked when I tied it, the front came underneath and the top came out the back the back part was above because then the back would kind of stick up some. So when you tie it on, let's see if I can do that right, then this is going to go underneath. So just put it around the neck and I just bunch it up however. You have a very stylish Mr. Fiddles going on. <laughs> yeah, so I saw some people said this looked like a girl. I probably could have chosen a different, a different color scarf, but so often I do that and I, I wanted them to kind of come out the same. So I like the extra bit to be in the back. Uh, so now I gotta get my sides right, sorry. Um, so here we go. Just tie it so that the shorter end is in the front, the longer end, and if it comes out the top, then if it was like on the tree, it would you know have a lot of movement to it like that. Okay, and then for the pocket, just what I do for the pocket is cut off an edge and then fold it over and I don't even fray check the pocket I just want to stitch it on right here by hand and I don't know if I want to spend that time because I might could show you some other things um, but let's just I would just hand stitch the pocket on right here I didn't want to glue it on because I wanted to put in the candy canes so we didn't list it on the website but we're giving you a little uh, piece of wire this is a 22 gauge white wire we don't have it in the shop right now but more is coming um, and I just this is a I don't know it's like 16 inch um, white wire and then I just took a red 
marker and made that. I mean, you could use red paint or something more red than mine, but I just painted that one end there. So I don't know how long the candy canes are. You'll just have to figure out what makes sense. But this is like the halfway point and I'm just going to bend that over. You can always cut them shorter, I found. So if you make it too long, you can cut it shorter. So we're gonna bend that to make our candy cane. And I have pretty aggressive wire cutters, so I found that the thing to do is to give myself a little buffer. We're gonna twist this, and I have a piece of felt somewhere, here it is. Um, we're gonna bring these together, but my wire cutters are pretty aggressive and they tend to eat off the covering. So I give them a pinch through the fabric, sorry. I'm giving them a pinch through the fabric here. Now I wanna twist this together and I'm just gonna hold on to the very end with my wire cutters. Um, the candy canes are sweet, they're the perfect touch. Uh, I'm gonna have a big run on candy canes too. <laughs> okay, so I, if you hold it here and then you twist both of them together, uh, I think this is the same way we kind of twist things on our how to uh, how to twist wires for armatures video oh so long ago <laughs> just hold it with one and then twist the other you get the best twist that way rather than trying to twist the wire and I did find if these are too long you could just cut them so now we have this great little twist and you could make straight candy canes if you wanted if you didn't want to bend it over but I'm just going to go ahead and bend it with my thumb that's the cutest thing <laughs> I, I wish my I wished my marker was a little more red than it is but then once you get your pocket made then you can just um, put them in the pocket so let me let me pin his her pocket on for the moment and we'll finish this little cutie off oh that pin's severely bent we'll finish this little cutie off with um, the little berry so also in the jingles pack um, we have little berries and there's there's tons of little treasures in here so you're going to get these like wood pegs and they have they have red ribbon and green ribbon and red twine and green twine they have little you could make your little beings holding these little um christmas lights if you want but for this one i chose a little red berry as if they're helping to decorate the tree so I'm just gonna bend, because they're on a wire, and they may not all be perfect, you know, these things. <laughs> these things have like this little candy coat them on it, candy coating on them practically, so, uh, you know, if you have a little white spot on your berry, well then tuck it inside or paint over it, whatever. Uh, some people are suggesting nail polish for the candy Oh, cane good, good idea. To get a really bright red That's color. a great idea. See, I don't really own red nail polish, but now I go, oh, now I need to go buy right. red nail polish. <laughs> There's an excuse. Okay, so we have we have Mr. Fiddles and 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 Missy Giggles, I guess, you know. They're they're quite a pair. Let me bring in just a couple more things I want to show you. A few more things that you can do with the uh, with the jingles pack that we came up with. Um, I did want to tell you for um, Barry here, little this is Cookie. For Cookie, I used the baby sweater that I showed you a moment ago. And when you look in the patterns, um, you're going to see something a little different than this, but let me show it to you. So there is a medium pattern for a sock sweater, sweater, sw whether you cut it from a sock or from a sweater. This is cut from the sleeve of the baby sweater, the same one I just stitched with you. When I sew it myself, rather than sew two seams like this to get it to fit, I sew just a diagonal. So if you look at the sweater, again, I chose the finished edge for the bottom, and then I just showed a, sewed a diagonal. And it does make a little bit of a point in the back, but that doesn't bother me at all. That way I don't have to have two seams. And you can use fray check, a, a real loosely knit sweater like this. You might wanna use the fray check around the arms, but in this case, Cookie had his arms taken off and they were put back on over his sweater. I didn't fill in with wool, but you can do that. And the pocket, I just winged the pocket. Double fold, you know, I wanted it to be like a little jersey pocket. This is the best and, pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then this, like a, like a hoodie pocket. And then this little bell comes in the jingle pack as well. So if you see this, this is about 
the same. And um, yeah, about that. So uh, Vicky asks, are all of the packs the same? And Vicky, for the most part, the packs are the same. What you're gonna see is there's a few more things I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm missing my, one of my packs has it. So let me see if I can find it. One of the packs I have, has my um, gift tags in them. So they might have different gift tags and they might have different wooden snowflakes, but otherwise, and the wreaths are two different sizes. Some are larger, some are smaller, and we just had to you know, use all the wreaths we had. So that's the really only difference is the gift tags can be slightly different. I had decorated one of my gift tags. So let's see if I can do that here and show you what you can do with these gift tags. And I wanted to show you uh, Sheepy also. So, and um, Chickadee too. So let's look at these real quick. Uh, Chickadee, what I did with uh, Chickadee, Chickadee was already made, he's been around. Uh, this little red thread is in there and so is this little green jingle bell. And then I used one of the gift tags, which are um, their die cut gift tags. And I just used this like a little cookie cutter ornament I have them somewhere. Uh, cookie cutter ornament, and I just, like a cookie cutter, and I needle felted right into the oh. template. Now, I had to sacrifice the gift tag because it got kind of bent, but I was willing to to do that. And then this little snowflake bling is in there, and I just glued it on to him. So that is, you can use these little punch outs for that, or you can take these and punch out the middles to decorate your gift tags. You'll get two gift tags. You get one craft gift tag and one red gift tag. And then what I did was like dress up the gift tags like this with my glue stick. And I had one around here somewhere to make it just a little bit fancier. Oh, so use you can use what's in there, even the punch outs, to dress up your gift tags and marry the, uh, the red with the craft. Now, um, I want to tell you before we jump too far ahead, something about cookie. Um, some of you probably wonder like why they don't have sleeves. And I wanna show you that it's going to depend on, uh, on your critters, the, their size, because sleeves like this made from the same material make him look like I just cut them out and then sew them just like we showed. It doesn't matter whether you have the thin part going up or the thick part going up. They make him just look like he has ginormous arms <laughs> <laughs> that are like sticking out like the Michelin man. Now you might think it's oh gosh, cute, yeah. but what you have to do if you want to give him sleeves is I usually take it off pull the sleeve in through the hole and then hand stitch around the hole. Um, so you can do it, but it kind of makes their arms stick out. Doesn't he look like the Michelin man? He does. Yeah, because it's so <laughs> thick. So I thought he looked cuter without. Now I have one more, there's there's lots of fun things in there, but I have one more thing to show you. And oh, here's, oh, here's one more thing, sorry. I have two more things. So here's a sweater. Uh, sheep, this was cut out from an adult sweater, sewed the same way, the neck is the same, sewed a pocket on, and in the little printouts are these little tiny letters um, to Santa, and I thought that would be really cute in a pocket. Um, we have a few other treasures in the printouts, and thank you, Holly, for finishing these up for me. So these are little signs that you could either hang on their necks or add to your gift tags. So they're, they're little miniatures um, that are in there. These are the usable ones. I'll, I confess that a couple of them made it onto the fold. So they won't be, they won't, the believe won't be usable probably because it made it onto the fold and, and one Merry Christmas sign. But what you have here are Christmas Carol books and um, these are made from the images from vintage Christmas Carol books. And these are actually Christmas Carols. I put oh them in there gosh. myself, yeah. So you can't read them, don't ask me what they are. But <laughs> they really are the lyrics from Christmas Carols. So you could give these to your little beings, you could put them in their pouch. Here's a bigger one, a, a bigger uh, Christmas Carol book they can hold. But these are actually Christmas Carols and you cut them out and then you just seal them together with a staple, putting the little uh, Brad's inside. More, lots of letters to Santa, so you can stuff those in any little pockets there. And um, then the last thing was a challenge that I gave to Holly, who some of you know, Holly is our resident sign maker here. 
And um, we wanted to make something with the wooden pegs. So we have hand wrapped the ribbons onto these cute wooden pegs. Some of the twine will be loose in there. Um, but we wrapped the ribbons onto these cute wooden pegs. And I'm sure some of you already have ideas for them, but this is what Holly came up with in like 10 minutes. I said, oh, you've got 30 minutes because neither of us did our homework. We, did, I did on that. My homework. we each had homework to turn our wooden pegs into something and neither of us did it. So Holly today made two of the most adorable pegs. Like the one, this one I think is like totally original and she did it with a felt sheet and she made this little Christmas tree. What was it, what, do you know what size these were? I think that the circle is about two and a half inches and then I got about a quarter of an inch smaller each time. Look at that. Look, at, she made a little Christmas tree. She like painted, as you painted this with, tell it. With Sharpie. And, and then I dunk, dumped it in a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> she painted it with Sharpie and then dunked it in a cup of coffee and then tied this ribbon is from the, from the kit and the felt is not, but this is the uh, Hunter. It's the Hunter Hunter felt sheet. Hunter Green felt sheet right here. So that to me is absolutely adorable. You could put that right on your Christmas tree as an ornament. And then this one, which we totally expected, was the the snowman. Like yeah. you got to make a snowman, snowman from one of the pegs. We just painted it white with acrylic paint, and then she got out the sharpies. Yeah. Yeah. All and, sharpies. Right. This is we just use what we had since yeah. we didn't do our homework. <laughs> Wool, right? Wool and a couple of berries. That's some pre felt. From the oh it's pre felt. Yeah, it seems like it because yeah. I feel like I pull it apart. So, you know, you could use even um this kind of thing. The flannel would be really cute. Yeah, there's so many that. options. I was just yeah. trying to try some show, uh, show something different. Peg people. Everyone said, Oh I know. Wool is <laughs> wool is awesome, especially you felt it along the way. So I think that I think that's all our stuff, right? I think that's it. We had I mean, one question pop up about the hood on the chickadee. Okay, the hood. Well, I would encourage you to watch our clothing our clothing segments, but I probably, I can show you basically with some fabric here. So if you watch our, some of our doll videos or needle felting clothes videos, I'm trying to think, so we did them on some of the little dolls. I show you how to needle felt a flat piece, but you would leave the ends unfelted. And I, I wanted to, to do that today, but I didn't bring the stuff to do it. And I will go overhead a little bit and show you at least with fabric what I would do. So to make this hood, really what I would make is a uh, a piece of felt, a wool like this. So I would lay out my batting. This is our MC1 batting in um, Bonsai. I would lay out a strip of the batting like this. And then for this right here, I would create a folded edge. So let's say it's rough. I would create a folded edge of the fiber like this and needle felt this down. Needle felt this, but leave the sides and the edges unfelted. So needle felt this, so you have a real nice fold in the fiber. Needle felt all this flat, and you're probably gonna have to peel it, you know, and go back and forth so that you get a pretty good finish on it. And then, as you can see, this is just, this fabric is the fabric that you've made gathered around his head so he already had the sweater on see his sweater looks almost just like we made with our socks and then this part which obviously be much smaller when you're felting it just gets needle felted and joined to the top of the sweater so um, that would you just gather it so if you you're gonna gather it under here although you're gonna gather very little so if you look back here I gathered it because I thought that seemed really natural to have the gathers under there so just like we do our ice cream swirl hats um, it's the same idea for like shaping those little clumps as you're working with them so it's actually really easy to do fun what else um, maybe tiny felting, tiny wet clothing. Yeah, I this look. The socks and the sweaters are going to give you the stretch you need and allow you to easily easily shape things. We do have wet felting clothings uh, in our Santa. We have a Santa. We have needle felting a doll tutorial series uh, on our YouTube channel. It's a whole playlist. You can jump forward to. We have needle felting clothing in there, and we also have wet felting clothing. We make bloomers for Granny Santa, and we make her like a house coat. Um, with sleeves and a little bit of simple, simple um, embroidery adornments, but it's actually really fun. And the bloomers are just so stinking cute. So I can't wait to see what you all do with these ideas and how you 
um, blingify and ornamentify uh, your stuff. And um, we had a lot of fun preparing for this. So I hope you'll check out the Jingle Bag. They are absolutely very limited. When we sell out, we're done. We're not going to remake them this year. But it was like my guilty pleasure to sit down. <laughs> they were so them. fun. It was it so was festive a... in the store with all the Jingle Bells. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we had a lot of fun with that. So we're going to give away some prizes, y'all. And thank you so much for hanging out with us this hour. I keep feeling like I forgot something, but I, I don't think I did. We covered a lot, huh? You did. You <laughs> made us for all the critters. We did a lot of things. So thank you guys for playing with us. And we're going to give away some prizes, huh? Yeah, so our, your choice is a Mr. Fiddles kit with your holiday bling pack or mm -hmm. Storybook Bunny or Simple Fox. So you have right. your choice of three critters right. and a bling pack to go with. Right. So we're giving away your choice of pack, Mr. Fiddles, Fiddles. Storybook Book Bunny, or Simple Fox. Or Simple Fox. And you're going to get a holiday jingle pack with that so we're gonna draw two names right now thanks for hanging okay. out with us y'all thank you thank you and if your question didn't get answered uh please leave it in the comment down below we read all of those uh and uh yeah can't wait to see all right who do you got okay i have laura buckles and i have eileen briggs congratulations gals thank you so much for felting with us i want to tell you real fast if you felt your own or share please tag us on instagram we love sharing those we love seeing those join us in our facebook group where we hang out all week long and you're going to see tons and tons of creations from the show this year and way more than stuff than we've come up with by our friends if you're looking for more involved classes check out our school feltingtutorials.com we have some free lessons there you can see if the format works for you and we have some amazing classes by amazing teachers more to come I'm gonna let y'all know that if y'all saw my interview with Dawn Edwards earlier this year her cl hat class called hidden treasures is coming out November so uh, watch mid-November we're gonna have the early bird sale and before Thanksgiving that class will go live so if you've been wanting to make a wet felted hat she has a two hat class in the school right now feltingtutorials.com and her class hidden treasures is coming out before Thanksgiving Giving. you can get in there too My yeah, so you don't have to make thanksgiving dinner you could just go make yeah <laughs> yeah and if you want to visit us call us email us shop with us there's our address uh online thank you all so much for hanging out with us today hope you have a really great afternoon and rest of your week thank you bye thank you